Today is uh, December 6th. Yesterday was the first day that Sarahji was giving talk. The yogis who are here, they come from places which are geographically apart. And these yogis are our Asian relatives, world relatives, samsara relatives, and dhamma relatives. And Saraji welcome these relatives to whom we are related in many ways. And Saraji will entertain these yogis who are our relatives, Saraji will entertain them with the Dhamma. Starting from today, Saraji will give Dhamma talk for one hour apart from Ubosata day. The Dhamma can uplift the person who practices systematically. And it is said that Dhamma Kamo Bhavan Hoti, meaning that the person who cherishes the theory as well as the practice of the Dhamma prosper and proliferate. On the other hand, Dhamma Dikhi Bravo, the person who does not like the theory and the practice of the Dhamma will lose. It is very important to incite the wish or the will to practice the Dhamma. Among the yogis who are here, they are yogis who are not familiar with the Dhamma practice before, and there are those who have practiced quite a lot in the Dhamma. For the ones who have been practicing Siddhipatthana meditation for quite some time, the explanations given here will not be as much necessary, but they will also have the chance to listen to these instructions again, and it will be more clear to them. And among the yogis, there are those who are not as familiar with the Satipatthana practice. So to these yogis, there will be explanation, encouragement, so that they will come to cherish both the theory and the practice of the Dhamma, and they will become Dhamma Gama. So it is important to incite the wish or the will to practice the Dhamma. And also, there will be explanation of the benefits of Satipatthana practice. Having heard the benefits of Satipatthana practice, they will understand the benefits of the practice. And by understanding the benefits of the practice, the person will have faith and confidence in the practice. Having faith and confidence in the practice, the person will have will to practice. The person will be eager to practice. So it is very important to waken the faith and confidence in these yogis and also to develop and to increase the faith and confidence in the practice. So, starting from today, Jaraji will be 
giving the Dhamma relatives to whom we are related in many ways, Saraji will be entertaining them with the Dhamma. By practicing Siddhipatthana meditation according to the test, one can gain seven benefits such as purification of the mind and so on. And Saraji will not yet explain these seven benefits. In order to gain the seven benefits such as purification of the mind and so on, one has to practice according to the correct method. In order to practice correctly, one should first learn the correct method of practice, how one should practice. If one does not know how to practice correctly, then one should learn the correct method. Learning the correct method, one should put it into practice. One should remove two kinds of not knowing. One should remove not knowing the theory and the practice. If one does not know the method, then one will not know how to practice. Not knowing should be removed. So if one does not know what should be known, such not knowing should be removed. In Siddhipatthana Sutta, in Satsa Nidesa, it is said that Dukkhi Jnana, one should discern Dukkha Satsa, the truth of suffering. Dukkha Smudhi Jnana, one should discern the origin of suffering. Dukkha Nirodhi Jnana, one should also understand the cessation of suffering. Makhe Jnana, one should also have knowledge of the path leading to cessation. There are four noble truths and thus there are four kinds of knowledge understanding these four noble truths. Among the four noble truths, the first one is the truth of suffering. The second is the truth of origin of suffering. And the third is the truth of cessation of suffering. And the fourth is the truth of the path leading to the cessation of all suffering. Among the four noble truths, the first two, the truth of suffering and the truth of origin of suffering, are called Vata Satcha. And the latter two are called Vivata Satcha. The the later two is called Vivata Satcha, the cessation of the Vata. So among the four noble truths, one should work on the first two, which are called Vata Satcha. So one should not work on the later two, but by working, on the first two of the four noble truths, one will automatically gain knowledge of the latter two. Among the four noble truths, the first two 
are called Vata Satya and the later two are called Vivata Satya. One should work on the first two, which are Vata Satya. Dukkha Satya, the truth of suffering, should be discerned. In order to discern Dukkha Satya, the truth of suffering, one should observe them. When one sees them by observing, one discerns Dukkha Satya, and by discerning Dukkha Satya, one will remove not knowing. If there is not knowing, one will be attached. And when one removes not knowing, one will not be attached. And thus, Mudiya Satya, the origin of suffering, will be removed. So one should observe the Dukkha Satya, the truth of suffering, within oneself. In order to practice, in order to note on the Dukkha Satya, there should be Okaha, Pripocha, Savana, Dharana, Samasana, and Sativeda. And Saraji will explain the meaning of each of these words. The first one is Okaha. One should learn, one should take a note. What are the Dukkha Satya that should be discerned? So briefly, they are Nama and Rupa, Mind and Matter. Matter are things that can be seen. Matter does not have the ability to cognize and it is called Anaramana. Rupa, the materiality, cannot cognize. So these Rupa are materiality, in other words they are also called matter, that cannot cognize. And Nama is the mentality that cognizes. So in brief, they are Nama and Rupa. Nama, the mentality that can cognize, and Rupa, materiality that cannot cognize. So one should learn in brief that there is Nama and Rupa, mentality and materiality. So this learning is called Okaha. So Saraji is explaining about that in brief. And later on, Saraji will explain in detail, combining with the practice. The second one is Pripocha. If there are meanings that one is not clear of, then one should discuss with the teacher. So discussion with the teacher, asking questions to the teacher is called Pripocha. If one does not understand what is Rupa, materiality, what is Nama, mentality, or if one does not know how many kinds kinds of rupa, materiality they are, how many kinds of nama, mentality they are, one should ask the teacher. It is called Pariputya. What should be discerned are the nama and rupa, mentality and materiality. So within oneself, there are things that should be discerned. So within ourselves, 
All these objects are to be discerned. So within oneself, they are nama and rupa, mentality and materiality. All of these are the field of objects to be noted. Within these fields of objects to be noted, there is presently arising objects such as seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, knowing, bending, stretching, and so on. These presently arising objects are arising new and new. So one should be noting the presently arising object that is arising at the present moment. And one should be noting them at the moment the object arises by the way of the Dipatana practice. So among the field of objects to be noted, one should be noting the presently arising object that is arising at the present moment. And one should learn how one should be noting the object. It is called Savanna. One should learn the method how one should be noting the object. And the other one is Dharana. By listening the method, how one should be practicing, one should bear it in the mind, the word as well as the meaning concerning with the method of practice. Listening to the method of practice, understanding the meaning, one should bear the method as well as the meaning in one's mind. So one should bear it in the mind so that it will be remembered. It will be remembered within one's own heart. But to put it in the Western way, one should store it in one's brain in order to remember it so that one will not forget. It is called dharana, bearing the correct method, bearing the way of practice in one's mind so that one will remember them. After learning the correct method, knowing the meaning, bear it in one's mind, one should put it into practice. When the yogi come to the center to practice meditation, first they should observe the, sorry, first they should take the eight precepts. After taking the eight precepts, they should learn how they should practice the Dibhatana meditation and they should understand what is Nama, mentality, what is Rupa, materiality. And they may ask the teacher if they are not clear. And when instructions are given, yogi should listen attentively and yogis should bear in mind. Only then, the Buddha Sasana, the teachings of the Buddha, will be within ourselves. By practicing the teachings of the Buddha within oneself, one's physical, verbal, mental behavior will be pure, clean, and blameless. In order to purify 
one's behavior by body, speech, and mind. One should practice the Buddhist culture so that one will gain the Buddhist culture within oneself. In order to gain the culture within oneself, it is connected with two things. The first one is Sadhuka Savana. One should listen attentively. When listening to the guidance and instruction, one should listen attentively, respectfully. And every day there are Dhamma talks, instructions and guidance according to the teaching of the Buddha. When listening to the guidance and instruction and the Dhamma talk, one should listen attentively without wandering mind. Without the mind wandering here and there, one should be listening attentively to the guidance and instruction. The knowledge that one has is not enough. One should listen to the guidance and instruction. There are instructions from the basic, which will be a good foundation to the practice. Learning the method of practice, one should have samasana, one should put it into practice. The objects are arising at the present moment. And in order to note the presently arising object, one should note the object with aim and effort. For example, when the rising of the abdomen arises, the rising of the abdomen should be noted. In order to note the rising of the abdomen, one should assert effort so that the mind will reach the object. So one should push one's noting mind. One should assert effort so that the noting mind will reach the object of meditation. One should not be slow or sluggish, but one should constantly be alert and energetic, asserting effort in noting the object. By noting the object with effort, the deep mindfulness will arise. In order that the mindfulness arises, one should aim one's noting mind onto the object so that the noting mind will be direct or face to face with the object. If the yogi aims the noting mind without a certain effort, then the noting mind will not reach the object. If the yogi asserts effort without aiming the noting mind, then the noting mind will slip away from the object. The mind will be deviated, slipping away from the object. In order to note the presently arising object concurrently, one should note the object, asserting effort in noting, aiming the noting mind, aiming and directing the noting mind onto the object. And it is called Samasana, putting the theory how to practice into the practice. It is called Samasana. As much one notes the object concurrently, Effectively, then one's mind will become pure and clean and one 
discerns the four noble truths. Noting the presently arising object, one develops knowledge into nama and rupa, cause and effect, and one discerns that these objects are arising and passing away, and thus they are suffering. And one realizes penetrating the truth, and it is called the Veda, penetrating the truth. As much one practices, as much one develops, sila, samadhi, and banya, morality, concentration, and wisdom, one will be removing growth, medium, and refined form of rudeness. The rudeness of the mind, the grossness of the mind, will be removed as one develop knowledge and one will become gentle in body, speech and mind. Gaining the body, speech and mind that is pure, clean and gentle, there will be sasana sampati. One will be endowed with the culture of the Buddhist Buddha teaching. So in order to have sasana sampati, in order to be endowed with the culture of the teachings of the Buddha, there should be samasana. One should practice accordingly with the correct method. In order to have samasana, there should be sadhuka savana. One should listen attentively to the guidance and instruction. When noting the object of meditation, one should note the object concurrently so that the noting mind will cover the whole object. One should note it in such a way so that the noting mind will be spread it, covered onto the whole object and one develop knowledge stage by stage. Developing knowledge stage by stage growth form of greed, anger, delusion will become weaker and weaker and one will be developing sasana sampati. In order to have sasana sampati, in order to be endowed with the culture of the teachings of the Buddha, there should be sadhu gansavana. One should listen to the instructions and guidance attentively. And there should be sadhu manasikara. One should practice accordingly with the guidance and instruction. And one should know the object concurrently. By practicing according to the guidance and instruction, one will be removing the rudeness, grossness, as one has said to Sadhuka Savana and Sadhuka Manasi Gara. So in this way, one should have the Ogaha, learning the correct method. There should be Puripocha, discussion with the teacher, asking questions if one is not clear. By knowing the method of practice, one should practice accordingly. So there should be Savana, the listening to the guidance and instruction. There should be Dharana, one should bear it in one's mind, the correct method, so that one will remember it, one will not forget it. And samasana, one should work according to the guidance and instruction. So in this way, when noting the presently arising object, one should note 
with a manifest so that the noting will be effective. As much the noting is effective, there will be Bhati Veda penetrating the truth. So may the, all the yogis should practice in this way so that they will penetrate the truth. So in brief, there are two things. If one does not know the correct method of practice, one should learn. One should learn by listening to the guidance and instruction, or one should read the book about the method of practice. So in this way, one should remove not knowing by learning. After learning the method of practice, one should note the presently arising object. Whatever object that arises, one should note it right away. By noting the presently arising object, there will be dukkhi anyana, dukkhi jnana, knowledge into the truth of suffering. If one fails to be mindful, instead of dukkhi anyana, there will be dukkhi anyana, not knowing in the suffering. Not knowing suffering, one will take it as good, one will think of these things as good instead of suffering. And one will know wrongly the cause of suffering as the cause of happiness. So in this way, one should remove not knowing by being mindful of the presently arising object with the practice of Satipatthana. So in this way, one should remove not knowing by being mindful in the practice of the Deepatthana. And Sarati will continue to explain tomorrow. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.